to our service. Now, I don't want to lose any reputation here. So given that I am welcoming us all, I have taken the opportunity to dig into my joke box and I've found three, yes three, that will help introduce our theme for the day. So, are we ready? Number one, what am I? I am a seed with three letters in my name. Take away the last two, and I still sound the same. What am I? So I'm a seed, I've got three letters. If I take away the last two, I still sound the same. What am I? A P. Number two. What has to be broken before you can use it? Any ideas? It's an egg. And the last one. What occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in 1,000 years? What occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never, ever, ever in 1,000 years? Do we know the answer? The answer is the letter M. I can hear you groaning all the way to your houses. <laughs> so, today, is the start of our new series. And perhaps for some, it could be the start of the rest of your lives. As you know, 
a group of us have been meeting to study the Freedom in Christ material. And if you're interested in joining us and you've been a bit nervous, what is it, what's it all about, then please talk to one of us, let us know, um, and we can have a look at how we can include you in the conversation. And so here on a Sunday, over the next coming weeks, we would like to spend some time um, on the Sunday space, being able to look at some of the key themes and questions that the Freedom in Christ material is asking. So to set the scene for today. Do you know, and I'm pointing, do you know, and do you live in the truth that you are absolutely loved by God? And do you know that Jesus died so that you and me and all of us can live free? And do you know what living in relationship with God is like? Do you know that the day that you met or the day that you meet, if you haven't already, meet Jesus, that is the start of a lifetime's worth of adventure, where we are invited into a defining moment. Knowing Jesus is a defining moment where life will never be the same again. And do you know that passage in 2 Corinthians 5? We'll get to the bigger passage a little bit later on. But the take home bit is the bit where it says, therefore, if anybody, and yes, that means absolutely anybody, is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. There's so much in just this little passage. And as we start this morning, we are starting on the start of the rest of our lives. Knowing Jesus means that we are completely new creations in Christ. We are holy ones who are accepted, we are secure, and we are significant. I would love to just pray for us before we get started. Let's pray. Father God, in a world that even in lockdown, even in the situation and the circumstances we find ourselves, can feel like it is moving so quickly. And in a world where we can go through days on end and not feel seen and not feel noticed. And as we think about who we are and what being a new creation in you is, help us to pause right now. And the truth that we are new creations, that we are loved, that we are free, that we are seen and we are known, let those things deeply root into us this morning. And as we look at your word together, Lord, we ask that you can bless us, that you can teach us, that you can challenge us, that you can help us to leave this space knowing more of relationship with you than we started. Father God, where there's things in our own lives and our own journey of faith that need, need dealing with, Father God, point your gentle finger at them. Help us to learn afresh what being in a free relationship um, and life-changing adventure with you, what that's like. Father God, speak to us this morning. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 21. We are ruled by the love of Christ, now that we recognise that one man died for everyone, which means that they all share in his death. He died for all, so that those who live should no longer live for themselves but only for him who died and was raised to life for their sake. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards, even if at one time we judge Christ according to human standards, we no longer do so. Anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being, the old is gone, the new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us a task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making all human beings his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins, 
and he has given us the message which tells us how he makes them his friends. Here we are then, speaking for Christ, as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, let God change you from enemies into his friends. Christ was without sin, but for our sake God made him share our sin, in order that in union with him we might share the righteousness of God. So is anybody going to admit to having watched The Sound of Music over the last few months? Some of you might be young enough to not even know what The Sound of Music is, but I grew up with it and I am going to confess that between Christmas and New Year I slobbed on the settee and I watched it from beginning to end and I reckon some of you might have done as well. You can confess on the chat bar. But what has The Sound of Music got to do with who we really are, who we are in God? Well, let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. In the beginning, Adam and Eve walked in the garden with God in the cool of the evening. They were created in the image of God, spiritually alive inside accepted, significant and secure in and with God. You and I were created for that kind of life. One evening, God could not find Adam and Eve. We were hiding from you because we were afraid, said Adam. What have you done? asked God. Have you eaten what I told you not to eat? Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. Their spiritual connection with God was broken. God, who is holy, could not walk with them in the garden anymore. His spirit could not be joined to their spirit. Spiritually, they died. This is our human inheritance, to be physically alive, but spiritually dead. Our purpose, our significance in God, is replaced by guilt and shame. Our security in God got replaced by fear. Our acceptance by God, our intimate relationship with him, is replaced by a sense of rejection. But our instincts cause us to search for a way back, a way back to a God-intended life of acceptance, security and significance in and with him. But how can we get back there? How can we become spiritually alive again, become connected to God once more? The answer, of course, is Jesus. He is where our search ends and where new life begins. God sent Jesus he was like Adam at the very beginning, physically and spiritually alive. But he did not sin. He did not disobey God. He lived in the fallen world, spiritually alive. Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Jesus lived in this fallen world, spiritually alive. So what did Jesus come to do? If I were asked, what is my favourite verse of all time from scripture? I would say this. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. There came a day in my spiritual walk with God, in my life as a Christian, when I said to God, if this is the life you promised, the life to the full, it's not, it's not what it's cracked up to be. I must be missing something. I want more. 
I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness, until you overflow. I want that. What did Adam lose? Life. What did Jesus give? What does he continue to give? Life. When we say yes to Jesus, when we believe in him, then we become a new creation. The Bible says, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. Now here's the thing, and I think it's where many of us, myself included, go wrong. We go down the road of the sound of music theology. Picture Maria and Captain Von Trapp. They are finally confessing their love to each other. And Maria breaks into song. I almost did, but decided maybe not. And Maria sings. For here you are standing there loving me, whether or not you should. So somewhere in my youth or childhood, I must have done something good. That is not what scripture says. But somehow deeply within us is that belief that to be loved, we must have done or do something good. But any of us who are grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, who have looked upon a new baby, they know, we know, that our love is not dependent on what that baby has done. They haven't done anything yet. But we are filled with love. We are filled with love for them because they are ours, because they are part of our family. As we believe in Jesus, we become spiritually alive. We become accepted, significant and secure in him. Because our identity changes, we become adopted children of God. Do I still sin? Yes, of course I do. I am not perfect. But my sin does not identify who I am. Sin is something that I do. It is not who I am. Deep down inside, I have become a beloved daughter of God because of what I believe, because I believe in Jesus. And slowly but surely, that belief makes its way to the surface. It changes how I am. Anyone who believes in Jesus, the old life is gone and a new life has begun.
I'd been a Christian for many years. I, of course, went to church. I taught in Sunday school. I sang in the worship group. I read my Bible. I went to and was involved in a home group. I was a good girl. And over the years, I'd read, I'd heard, I'd prayed, had people praying for me. The words that come up again and again in scripture of how precious I was to God how I was loved, how I was adopted daughter of the king. And every time I heard those sort of words, I used to think inside, oh, that's nice, that's lovely. But if they only knew, if they knew what I was like, if they knew what I'd done, then they'd know that couldn't be true. And then there came a day, and I remember it still like it was yesterday, I was sat in my parents' home. I was 30 something and I was having a few days off and um, house sitting for them. Their house happened to be in the Lake District, which is really lovely. And I was sat and I was reading Psalm 139. And I got to verse 14. Verse 14 reads, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. I stopped at that verse and I couldn't say it. And I said out loud, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. And very, very loud in my head came the words, so are you calling me a liar? I wrestled, in my mind I wrestled. And then I chose to read out loud those words. God, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And that my soul knows well. And my life has never been the same since. Because in the past, none of those words stuck. But that day, that word stuck. And then as I continued to journey over the years to come, more and more words stuck and I never look back. I am accepted. Man I say no to the lie that I am rejected, unloved or shameful. In Christ I am accepted. Man digar matrud mahrum az mohabbat ya napak nisam. Man dar masih kamelan pazirofte shode hastam. God says, I am God's child. خدا می فرماید, من فرزند خدا هستم. I am Christ's friend. من دوست مسیح هستم. I have been justified. من عادل شمرده شده هم. I am united with the Lord and I am one spirit with him. من با خداوند پیوند شده و با او یک روح هستم. I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. من به بهایی خریداری شده ام و دیگر از آن خود نیستم. I am a member of Christ's body. من از از اعضای بدن مسیح هستم. I am a saint, a holy one. من مقدس هستم. I have been adopted as God's child. من فرزند خانده خدا هستم. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. من به واسطه خدا روح القدس دسترسی مستقیم دارم. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. من بازخرید شده ام و همه گناهانم آمرزیده شده است. I am complete in Christ. من در مسیح از کمال برخوردارم. I am secure. من ایمان هستم. I say no to the lie that I am guilty, 
unprotected, alone or abandoned. In Christ I am secure. من دیگر مقصر بی دفاع تنها و رها شده نیستم من در مسیح کاملا ایمان هستم God says I am free from condemnation خداوند میفرماید من برای همیشه از محکومیت آزادم I am assured that all things work together for good من مطمئن هستم که همه چیز با هم برای خیریت من در کار می باشد. I am free from any condemning charges against me. من از هر اتهامی که بر ضدم اقام شود آزادم. I cannot be separated from the love of God. من نمی توانم از محبت خدا جدا باشم. I have been established, anointed and sealed by God. من توسط خدا استوار شده، محض شده و مهر شده ام. I'm confident that the good work God has begun in me will be perfected. من اطمینان دارم کار نیکویی که خدا در من آغاز کرده به کمال خواهد رسید. I am a citizen of heaven. من شهروند آسمان هستم. I am hidden with Christ in God. من با مسیح در خدا پنهان هستم. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love and self-control. به من نه روح ضعف، بلکه روح قوت، محبت و انضباط داده شده است. I can find grace and mercy to help in time of need. من می توانم در هنگام نیاز رحمت و فیضی را به یاری خود بخوانم. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. من از خدا زاده شده ام و دست آن شریر به من نمی رسد. I am significant. من دارای اهمیت هستم. I say no to the lie that I am worthless, inadequate, helpless or hopeless. In Christ I am significant. من دیگر بی اهمیت، بی کفایت در مونده یا نومید نیستم من در مسیح عمیقا ارزش دارم و فردی خاص هستم God says I am the salt of the earth and the light of the world خدا میفرماید من نمک زمین و نور جهان هستم I am a branch of the true vine Jesus a channel of his life من شاخه ای از تاک حقیقی عیسی و مجرایی برای حیات او هستم. I have been chosen and appointed by God to bear fruit. خدا مرا برگزیده و مقرر داشته تا میوه آورم. I am a personal spirit empowered witness of Christ. من شخصا با قوت با قوت روح القدس شاهد مسیح هستم. I am a temple of God. من معبد خدا هستم. I am a minister of reconciliation for God. من خادم آشتی و مصالحه برای خدا هستم. I am a fellow worker with God. من همکار خدا هستم. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. من با مسیح در آسمان نشانیده شده ام. I am God's workmanship, created for good works. من ساخته دست خدا هستم. و آفریده شدم برای انجام کارهای نیکو. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. من می توانم آزادانه و با اطمینان به خدا نزدیک شوم. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. من قدرت هر چیز را دارم در مسیح که مرا نیرو می بخشد.
Yeah.